So the museum of everything else is coming along quite nicely. I've spent about nine months putting this thing together. It's been quite a lot of work, but you know, there's just two hands and I quite like it that way. It's just getting it all done, but it does take a little bit of time. And the plan is to have it ready for visitors for the summer. The museum of everything else isn't just about synthesizers. It's about, uh, you know, obsolete and experimental technology and just the history of electronics, DIY components, uh, the, the how things work and stuff like that. Obviously quite a lot of the stuff does make sounds, but it's more about the experimentation and the technology more than you know like oh look at this synthesizer these things are interesting because of the electronics in there the technology that's used uh, and they're not necessarily valuable it's more about it you know just why would you have that in your house like a massive paperweight or something like that obviously there are interactive things around the whole building for instance you've got nervous squirrels owl organ you've got Eric Brandel's pluby you've got the thousand oscillator mega drone hopefully at some point maybe the furby organ however it is a little bit far gone and it does need a good old fix and there's a load of other things that are just wired in and as time goes on it'll just there'll be more and more. For instance, there's a wall with a Gen SX-1000 and a Transcendent and an SWTPC and uh, a couple of analog drums and things like that bolted to the wall. When this one's done, it'll be up on the wall and wired into a relay oscillator. But there is a corner with a couple of speakers with the idea of just having a couple of synths plugged in. In the center of this is a Cosmo format modular that I'm putting together. I'm just putting them together when I've got some spare time. So it's taking a little while to get all the modules filled out. In the modular perfection case, which is basically a Eurorack modular case, but but made for Cosmo size format. And if you're interested in that, the modular perfection links are below. But the problem with a lot of synthesizers, well, a lot of good synthesizers is, you know, they're quite valuable things and it's a little bit worrying having something like that sitting about, you know. So so I, had a, so I was in a situation where I thought it would be really cool to have a, like a modular synth uh, as well as the Cosmo format one, just so people, you know, have an idea of two different types. But the thing is with other modular synths is they're, they're expensive. Eurorack is pricey, but and at the same time, you may as well go to a music shop and play on it there it's not like a museum kind of thing and you know something like a big Moog 5U modular synthesizer you know that's cost an arm and a leg and it would just be an absolute liability and the other thing is if it gets scratched then you're worrying about value and this that and the other so in this box that's in front of me in this footage where I actually shot it and I forgot to record the audio well hopefully this is the answer to something that is still interesting it's still relatively unique uh, it's you know if it gets bashed about a bit it doesn't matter much and you know it isn't crazy valuable it's a, it's a bit of fun that is made to be used and enjoyed. Anyway, this right here is a DIY 5U modular synthesizer. And I've got to be honest, I wasn't expecting to get this. When I found it, I set a max bid of what I could afford and justify. And I was fully expecting to get out bid. And then when I got a notification saying that I won it, I was a little bit like, uh oh. So to answer the earlier question, well, it's DIY synthesizers. The thing about DIY synthesizers is pretty much every single one is different. And these things have been lovingly built by people. And the character of the person obviously transfers over to the build. Every single DIY synthesizer is, is different. And this one is no exception because there's no synthesizer exactly the same as this anywhere else but on this table right now. And that's why I think these sort of synthesizers are perfect for the museum's interactive zone. Because A, if a switch breaks or it gets scratched or something, it's not the end of the world. These things are repairable. And the thing is, if it does get scratched and stuff, you don't, you know, it's not like you've lost value on a really expensive mug or something. This thing is built and it's made to be used and enjoyed. This is another perfect example of a DIY instrument and this is gonna be in the interactive zone as well. I'm gonna be setting this up and doing a video in it within the next week or two. And this is a vocoder built by Christian Bergmiller. When I do the video on it, we'll have a look on the inside of it because it is impeccable. However, it's not always good news when you get a hold of DIY synthesizers. The, the skills of the builder vary a lot. So sometimes it's very hard to tell uh, from secondhand listings and eBay listings like this, uh, exactly how well it's been built. So I've got to be honest, I haven't got a clue how well this thing is going to work. It did say in the listing that it does sort of work, but it's been sat uh, under a desk for the best part of a year. That's cool, it's actually already patched around the back, so it's a semi-patched modular synth in the way, I guess.
so, 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 what's going on with this thing right here? It doesn't even get into the shot. We'll start on the bottom area, which was apparently built by a friend 10 years ago or so. So uh, we'll have a peek. I love it. It's just like, you know, wooden rails. None of this fancy bobancy. How the heck? You can see that it's been self-etched, as you can see. And uh, the PCB has been self-drilled. And this is mentioned to be style after a traditional mini Moog style uh, oscillator. It looks like maybe it was built in something else uh, first because it's got these uh, connectors, but these connectors aren't actually wired. It looks like all of the actual connections have been directly soldered. You can see the temperature compensation resistor here that's been uh, permanently coupled to below. So there's three of these lovingly made oscillators. Next to that we have the Mini Moog filter. I'm not sure what this filter is. I can't remember what was described in the description, uh, but let's have a look and we can find out for ourselves. Oh, it looks to be self-etched as well. So this is a self-etched uh, Mini Moog filter as well. Uh, I remember him mentioning that it took a while to match the transistors in the transistor ladder. It's got CA3046s and oh, look at that. That is awesome. Now we're gonna have a look at the contour generators which are attack, decay and sustain. I've just taken it, oh wait a sec, it's actually connected directly to the VCA. I didn't realize that the actual, it was the same uh, panel on the front. So this is a dual attack sustain release and a mini Moog style VCA and it's all been built on proto board or is it strip board? Oh, strip board, how cool is that? DIY. That is so cool. I'm not exactly sure how the panel has been made. It's, uh, it's very smooth. There's no feeling between the bit where there's no ink and there is ink. So maybe it is like something like um, an iron on transfer. Maybe it's an iron on transfer or a decal, maybe. The power supply around the back has also been self-designed. It's got screw terminals. As it was mentioned, this modular was probably bashed together from other ones, from other modules that used different power supplies, but this has been bashed together with screw terminals. As you can see, these have been modified slightly to fit in here. Moving on to the top row. Let's start over here. I seem to remember him mentioning that this is a music from outer space. And the reason why this is here was basically to round off the case because there was a gap. Oh no, this is a self-etched two VCAs around an LM13700 dual transconducted amplifier. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. For some reason, this panel is double thickness. Quite interesting. So this is based on the Moog 921 VCO and the front panel is literally the front panel of a Moog 921, but it hasn't got the bent around stuff. So it's been made from, yeah, I guess a, a, a picture of it and it's been printed out. I seem to remember it being mentioned that this might have been a U-Synth one. I'm not quite sure, but that's cool. It seems like when it was being tuned, uh, one of the precision resistors around the uh, tuning, the octave thing wasn't cutting the mustard. So it's been swapped with a preset poten potentiometer to do the same job. But the great thing is, is all of it's been put together really well. Like all of the soldering's just pretty bang on. It's just got that lovely DIY charm to it. Anyway, let's get to the, uh, to the sequencer. I seem to remember there being mention of this being a self-designed jobby, potentially. I think it is. It's the 900 sequencer PJS 4-2011. So this was put together in 2011 potentially and dual quantizer, a quantizer on the back. I didn't realize there was a quantizer. Okay. Oh, I see. So the quantizer, that's what Q out one stands for. Uh, I'll be interested to see what that is about or what what quantizer it is. And it looks to be a quantizer based on a digital to analog converter and just logic, basically. As for the actual sequencer board, you can't see, but these are actually 4013 chips and these are dual flip-flop chips. These are the same ones that I covered in the video of making sequencers with flip-flops. The link will be below and that's on the Museum of Everything Else channel. And then, yeah, it's got two quantizers tacked on the back. There seems to be a lot of adjustments and stuff. You can really tell this has been a, like a home design job. The other problem with stuff like this is sometimes if there is a problem, it's a little bit hard to uh, figure it out. Probably not a massive amount of documentation, but maybe there is. Hopefully there is. So hopefully this doesn't break or go wrong because, um, yeah, we may be in a little bit of problem town trying to fix that thing. But it's, it won't be impossible. It won't be impossible. But now I've had a look at the back, I'm, I'm a little bit more aware of the functioning of it. So I've just had a quick look around the back of this again because I need to figure out what is actually connected together. And this red wire here, and um, there's a brown wire right here as well, you can see. These uh, mean that all of the volt per octave inputs of these three oscillators are actually wired together. So if there's nothing plugged into each of these, it means that all of them are actually plugged together. So they're multiple together. So if you plug a volt per octave into this, it means that 
all three of these should be wired together. So the wire over here from the back of all of these ones, actually wire, AUX output I've just found, actually wire into the inputs of the Moog VCF. So if there's nothing plugged into these, these are automatically wired into the input one, input two, and input three. And then, yeah, you can select between which waveform you wanna go into. I'm just putting this back together and I've totally forgot to even mention the actual case, which I'm pretty sure is just, it's literally just a bookcase from Ikea. I love it. Just, I, I, you can actually see the holes where all the shelves go in. It's just a flat pack bookcase. Also, the keyboard was quite interesting. Initially, I was really quite surprised by the actual casing of it. It's really robust, but it, I found out after a little bit of looking around and figuring out, it's actually based on a Yamaha YK10. And inside it's got a, a circuit board that talks to the switch matrix on it. And it goes into an app mega chip, which is from an Arduino. And then that talks to a digital to analog converter, which basically makes this work. I've asked Pete, who is the seller of this machine, for a bit more information, but I haven't quite heard anything yet. But if there is, then please check in the uh, description below because there will be, hopefully, if he lets us know of anything, there'll be links to uh, some information. Anyway, after having a quick look around in this modular synth, it's got a lot of character, it's very quirky and stuff. There's a few bits of uh, glue stuff, and you know, it's, you can tell it's been homemade, and it's great because, you know, it's just, it's an enjoyable thing, and I think it's gonna sit great next to the Cosmos synth. Anyway, I did a live stream on YouTube membership and Patreon uh, last night of uh, me just uh, playing through it, playing a bunch of sounds, recording a bunch of samples and stuff, which are also available over there as well. So here's a few clips of, uh, you know, it doing this thing. <laughs> But yeah, what a synthesizer, it's pretty cool. Uh, when If you wanna play on it, there is an opportunity to when the Museum of Everything Else will open, and it will open, I promise you. It's not just a big long talk about it, it will be opening, I promise you. If you wanna see the live stream and me trying to get different sounds out of it and stuff, you can still watch that back over on Patreon and YouTube membership, and you can also download the sample pack that I made for it as well, over there. Anyway, I've been Lil Mom No Computer. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, and yeah, don't be scared to try it. Mm.